Uh, yeah, thank you. So yeah, my name is Valentin Charles and I'm we're going to present to you today so the Yopana perspectives on uh, publishing schema.org data and also harvesting uh, schema.org data. So this work was done under the consultancy work of Richard Wallace, some of you might know him, and also the, the Yopana staff. So um, the main goal of Yopana, so Yopana is the digital uh, plat the platform for digital cultural heritage and uh, the main goal for us is to provide access to cultural heritage and also encourage people to engage with culture and where users can find us. In fact, most of them are coming from the web and more specifically via a search, search engine, so via the, the search in Google, for example. So it is crucial for Yopana to be recognized as a trusted and authoritative repository of cultural heritage in those places, so by uh, search engines. Um, so where is Yopana on the web? So first, it's the main Yopana portal, the Yopana collection portal, which provides access to more than 54 million uh, of uh, cultural heritage objects. Then we have our thematic portal, which are based on the same collection, but provide a, a thematic access to some part of our, of our collection. In this case, it's uh, Yopana music. So it's everything we have in Yopana related to music. Then we have some uh, virtual exhibition, also reusing the, the Yopana content, but in some kind of curated environment on, on, some, uh, on some thematics. Um, we have also some Yopana objects that are coming um, or that are in a, in a wiki uh, media comments, for example. Uh, this is um, a project we had on the First World War, so Yopana 1418, where um, uh, some objects have been uh, uploaded in wiki media comments and then they are available uh, in Yopana. We are also using social media, so we are also exposing some content in some curated board on Pinterest. So this one, for example, about children. And then we are using different type of social media, for example, Twitter or Facebook. So as you can see, the content can be find, uh, found in various uh, places. And so do the data, in fact, that are traveling with those digital, uh, digitized representation of those cultural cultural heritage objects. So how the data in Yopana looks like. So at Yopana, um, the way we manage to publish our data on the web is uh, via the development of the Yopana data model, EDM, which is the model that have allowed us to get uh, into the semantic web um, environment and start publishing uh, the data. So this model enables us to represent structured and open data. So all our metadata are available in CC0 uh, license. It allows uh, the representation of uh, links between object and their digital representation, plus links to control vocabulary or data sets such as geonames, dbpedia, wikidata. So it's really a model that uh, has allowed us to represent much richer data and much more connected data as well. Um, and then on the other on, on the other side, so on the search engine uh, side, you have a schema.org that was already mentioned uh, this morning. So um, schema.org is uh, developed as a vocabulary and it helps so it's the way search engines have been using to share their data on, on the web. So practically, its main application is in, a, in web page. So the data is referenced and embedded uh, into the HTML uh, pages of the website. And then uh, the search engine can crawl uh, those, uh, those data. Um, it's a um, vocabulary that is um, run yeah, as a collaborative and community um, uh, exercise, so mostly under the W3C. And um, it can be used to represent um, cultural heritage, as, as you have seen it this, uh, this morning. Uh, maybe something that is relevant for you is that uh, this model can be extended. So there are two extensions that have been uh, developed or are being developed. Uh, one uh, is the bibliographic extension, which um, provides additional properties for bibliographical resources. And at the moment, there is some work done for archival uh, materials. So it's the archetype extensions. So the idea of, uh, of this work was for Yopana to 
start researching uh, the benefits of schema.org for our own service. So how we would uh, adopt schema.org and, and how we will, would do it. So with uh, this consultancy work, we have explored different ways and we have started to, to, to do the work. And the first step, of course, for us was to uh, develop a mapping from our data model to schema.org. So first, uh, the first objective was to try to have um, um, schema.org representation of our data that was still rich, but uh, tailored to the Yopana realities and the user needs. Because if you do a mapping to schema.org, it's mostly for search engine to find you and to use your data. So you might not want to have an exact copy of your data. So you really need to think in terms of uh, your user needs and requirements, what do you want to expose, and then uh, use that for, for the mapping. So, um, so the work was basically to represent uh, the quite hierarchical structure of EDM that you can see uh, on the left <laughs> to the schema.org um, um, vocabulary. Um, so for example, briefly, I'm not going to go through the whole mapping exercise, but in schema.org you have the schema uh, creative work class, which matches uh, well the semantics of our EDM provided CH show class, which is where we describe, we have the metadata description for a cultural heritage object. Then we have the schema media object that correspond to our EDM web resource class, which uh, is where we describe all the metadata related to a digital object. So we make the separation between the meta description about the cultural mm -hmm. object and then its digital uh, representation. Um, and then you have um, several other classes that matches uh, um, uh, the EDM classes, such as schema person, schema place, that matches our EDM place and uh, EDM agent for organization class we have in, in our model. So even if the exercise was, uh, in a way, mapping um, our structured EDM to a more flatter, generic, uh, structure, uh, which is the schema.org one, we could still keep all the relationships we needed because of all these contextual uh, classes that exist in, uh, in schema.org. So this looks quite um, straightforward. And of course, uh, you have several subclass for each of these class that can also be re uh, relevant. So creative work, you have also under creative work, you have visual artwork, schema book, schema painting. So those are subclasses that could be used as well. And the same with media object, you have image object, video object, audio object. So you can uh, refine a bit this, uh, this mapping. So this looks quite straightforward, but in fact, there was still some, uh, some issue in, in the mapping. So for example, um, to be able to map our provided CHO to subclasses of creative work, that means we need to know what type, what is the type of the cultural heritage object. We don't always know this. If we have the information, it might be a string. Sometimes in a language we don't understand, like Estonian, Latvian, so we won't be able to know that this book is a book. Uh, so ideally we should have a URI to a resource, but this is not always the case. So in fact, the mapping to a subclass of schema.org will be conditional to information we will find in DC type. So you start getting into some kind of uh, mapping discussion. The same happened for EDM web resource. If you want to know the specific type of a web resource, probably you will find this information in the MIME type, uh, which is a, a separate field. So again, uh, if you have it, then you can use a subtype saying it's an image object, it's an audio object. But if you don't have it, then we will have to use the generic media object uh, class. And um, also some very interesting properties such as art medium, art form, artwork surface are really relevant for Yopana to describe sculpture or painting. But those properties are only available for the schema visual artwork class, which is a sub class of creative work. So if we can identify this object is of type painting, we can use visual artwork, then we will be able to use those property. Otherwise we won't. So, Yes, yeah, so those was the, the kind of discussion uh, we had when uh, doing the mapping. Then the second uh, problem was to um, try to define different strategies to map our record view, which we have in EDM, to the entity view that is uh, proper to the schema.org model. So schema.org is really following the linked data principle. So the way things are described is really based on the entity. And in uh, Yopana, we still have this record 
kind of vision of thing. And um, so that means for many of our entities, uh, we, um, we still have a lot of strings in our data. So we do enrichment work, have been talking about that in previous SWIB. Um, so we have sometimes a URI to a fully fledged resource, but sometimes we only have strings. So it's how we map this string to the entity view of schema.org. So the minimal requirements you can use to do that will be just to expand the strings into an entity description. So it, this is what you can see here. So you have a creator with a name. This was the string we had. And you just had a type. So it's, it's a person. And practically, this will be mostly implemented uh, as a blank node. Coming back on blank nodes, so then you need to represent those data. In schema.org, um, there is different way of doing that. So we have explored those different strategies. The first one is to have an implicit blank node. So you don't have a URI to describe your entity, so uh, this person, Luigi Calamata. So what you do in the first solution, you just put the entity description in line with the resource description. Um, so it's the, the first um, option. The second option is to have the blank note more explicit. So basically, you describe the entity uh, with a blank note. So you see this P0 person, Luigi Calamata. And then in your resource description, you reference to uh, that entity. And this creates a, a blank note because you don't have a proper URI for, for this entity. And then the third uh, option, which is the recommended one, <laughs> of course, is to have a fully fledged uh, URI to your resource. And basically, an application consuming the data would just have to follow the link to collect uh, the entity, uh, the data related to the entity. So in this case, um, for the creator, you have a data.uopana.eu uh, link that links to, to that particular entity, so the person Luigi Calamata. So this was um, the discussion we had um, on how to represent uh, those entities when we don't have uh, proper URIs for, for those. And then speaking of URIs, we had some discussion about how to design the URI. Um, so one point when you start doing a mapping to schema.org, you, when you start discussing uh, schema.org, because you speak about web pages but also data, it happens that you start confusing the URI of the, of the web pages and the URI of the resource. And it might sound stupid, but it's something you have to, to keep in mind. So in this case, in this example, you will see that the link to the web page is different than the links to the resource. So in one case, you have a www.yopana.eu slash portal uh, URI. And in the other case, you have a data.yopana.eu slash item uh, URI. And this makes the difference between the web page, the object within its landing page, and really the data. So it's something you have to, to keep um, uh, in mind when um, working with schema. Um, so then, once we had done the mapping and we had our, our schema.org representation, how we would publish the schema.org data? So the objective uh, in this case is to enable external organizations such as Search Engine to consume uh, the data into their own knowledge graph. So for this, you need to uh, embed the data within the, your HTML, HTML pages. In order to do that, you have to make sure you are not mixing the uh, design, I mean, the, the design aspect of your page, so the HTML, and you don't mix that with um, the, the schema.org data. Because basically, your page might, you, the design of your page might evolve, as well as, so the, the design of the page might evolve independently of the data, schema.org might evolve, EDM might evolve, so you need to be able to quickly update uh, both part without have without being confronted to a, a kind of inflexible structure. So the idea is really to try to separate uh, the two. And the standard approach to do that is to bolt on the structured data to the page construction. So basically, you will insert the schema.org in the page source code, but this will have to be done without imp impacting the visual output of your page. So practically, the way to do that, one way to do that, is to, for example, have a JSON-LD output of your schema.org data, <laughs> and you insert it into the web page uh, using an HTML script tag. So this is really the schema.org data 
which is inside, inside a specific tag and it's not mixed with uh, uh, the HTML of your web page or some CSS or whatever related to, to the design of that page. Then the second, then the other question was how we would generate the schema dot org data. So you have um, either you could generate them on the fly, so that means you don't store the schema dot org data next to your, in our case, our EDM data, but we generate them on the fly. So when a page is requested, we um, we have a mapping, uh, the, the mapping is taking place, and we just serve the schema dot org data. Um, this is quite good because you don't have to store extra data, but it could cause some problem into loading the page. And also there is some data dependency with, uh, with the mapping. If your mapping change, you will have to change your, your routine. Then uh, the other option is batch creation. So basically you have, you store your data. So in our case, EDM, we store the schema.org data and then we re render the schema.org uh, when, uh, when it's requested. Uh, but again, since you have batch generated your data, if the mapping change, you will have to generate everything again. You might need to re-index your database. So this is also not uh, the ideal uh, situation. So maybe the best is the combined approach. So maybe it's something we are thinking at Yopana we should go towards. So there is still the pro and the cons of the two approach, but maybe we can use some alternative standard web caching technique to limit uh, some loading requirements. So then we could try to make the most of, of the, two, uh, the two solutions. And then the last step uh, to get search engine to crawl and consume your data, uh, the recommendation is to provide sitemaps. So what is sitemaps? So sitemaps are informing search engine about the website uh, URLs that are available for crawling. Uh, so uh, it's a list of uh, website uh, URLs, but it can also contain some additional information that will help search engines to crawl, um, to crawl your page. Um, so those sitemaps need to be uh, provided and well maintained because basically if um, changes are not indicated in those sitemaps, that means the search engine might um, not fully crawl your, your page and, and get your data, or it could be also that your data are not consumed at all. And when you think about updating your sitemap, it's not only indicating that the web page has changed, so the, the design, but it could be also that just the data has changed, the schema.org data has changed, but not the design of the page. So you need to take into account that. So you don't update your sitemap only because you change the design of your page. If you just change the data, you would have also to update uh, the sitemap. So those are the different steps uh, to uh, publish uh, schema.org uh, data. Then, so we had this uh, this well thought uh, at Yopana, and then we thought maybe there is, so this is how Yopana would publish schema.org data. But what would happen if we would ask our data partners, so the, the, the data partners we aggregate data from, to also provide us with schema.org data? Can we harvest those data instead of going to an OAI PMH repository, copying the data in Yopana and then processing them? So we made some investigation on how we would do that. So practically, in fact, the way to do that, um, the mechanism is quite similar to crawling ordinary web page. So a data provider, like a library, your library, would provide us with a sitemap. We would go there, we would follow the hyperlinks in the HTML, and we will fetch your schema.org uh, data uh, directly. For cultural heritage institution, this can be sitemaps can be quite good because they would enable web crawlers to reach some areas of your website that they might not be able to reach otherwise. So, for example, you might have some uh, data that are not uh, offered by a browsable interface. So, you might expose some data, but you don't have a, a landing page for it. So, the search engine can't find those pages. With sitemaps, you could indicate uh, those. Um, and also, there might be the case that when you update your content, search engines are not going to guess that you have updated your content and go there to, to crawl it again. But with sitemaps, you can indicate that to them. You can tell them, hey, Google, I have updated my sitemap and there is new data there to be crawled. So it's, a, it's an indication for them to, to, to crawl again a page they might have crawled months, um, yeah, um, months over. Um, so this was for the practical aspect. 
On the Urbana side, because all our services are running on EDM data and not schema.org data, if we would harvest schema.org data, um, we would have to do a new mapping. So from schema.org to EDM this time. So we have worked on this, uh, this mapping using the mapping I've presented before, because of course it's, uh, you do it in one direction, you think well, it's going to work in the other direction. But let me close this, I'm, I'm nearly finished. <laughs> um, but uh, we had some additional concern. For example, in EDM, we are requiring some mandatory elements. And if we collect data from schema.org, we might not get the mandatory element we need to fulfill the condition European has set. So that means if we would ask to our data provider, if you have schema.org data, please, uh, we would have to ask them to make sure they still respect the European standard within their schema.org. So this call for more, uh, uh, more recommendation. And I want just to add that for this experiment of the mapping, uh, we have used the data uh, from MJ, so the, meta the data that was presented uh, this morning from the, um, Illinois, the University of Illinois Urbana Champaign. So we used their schema.org data to see if we would convert those back to EDM, what, uh, what will happen. So this is just a little uh, latent lot. So to conclude, so this work um, um, showed us that it was possible to represent European uh, data resources using the schema.org vocabulary. And on the way, we have tried to document all our findings. And this is my presentation. So I hope those little elements I've highlighted could be also useful for you. So the, the question we have asked ourselves, you will probably have to ask those questions to yourself, uh, to, to, your, uh, to, to apply those questions to your case as, as well. So we will implement this mapping in our API output. It's not the case yet. Uh, there was some delay, so it's planned for next year. And we will work further on recommendation and specification to enable the provision of schema.org data interoperable with EDM. So what we would like is to propose schema.org as an alternative source for us to aggregate um, uh, data. Um, so everything I've been presenting today has been uh, reported inside um, um, an article for uh, the Code for Lib journal. So you can find it uh, online and find all the details related to, to the mapping that I didn't have time to, uh, to explain to you today. Thank you very much. Thank you for a fascinating talk. Um, do we have any comments or questions from the audience? Yeah. If, uh, thank, thank you for your pre presentation. So if I understand, if I understood it correctly, you, you, one of the reasons that you used JSON-LD was because uh, you, the, uh, the design of the page may be uh, different from the data that you want to provide in, in, for, for machine consumption. Um, if, so I'm wondering why would it matter in that case if the data that you're providing for a machine is different than the data that you're providing for humans uh, need to be on that particular URL and not just some arbitrary endpoint because you know you can still cons the machine can still consume that information. Like why would it have to reside in that particular page as opposed to somewhere more perhaps uh, discoverable? Um, let me think, because, yeah, I mean, this, I'm not sure if there is another alternative, so, because in this case, um, I think we have kind of followed blindly the recommendation from schema.org in the sense that, um, yeah, it's data embedded in web page, so, yeah, for me, it seems to make sense that they are inside the same page. Um, whether they could be somewhere else. But in a way, I think that the idea is because we want those data to travel with the, the web page that are online. So if we, for example, uh, feature uh, an object on Twitter, we want the schema.org to, to follow. And I think because we will be always pointing to the landing page for that particular object record, um, that's where we want the data to be. Um, so I'm not sure. Maybe there is other right. technical thing that can be done to not necessarily do that. But I would say that because the idea is, um, yeah, you expose, you have all your web page. I mean, this is the way um, 
the, day, the, the pages you expose on the web are the pages from your portal, etc. So that makes sense. You want the data to travel with those pages wherever they are, because the link we use in this case is always the link to the, the record page, so the, the landing page where you can see the object right. on the Yopana website. Like so the, it feels to me that this is why we would do it this way. Right. In case you haven't considered, uh, maybe look into RDFA. So, because... Yeah, so basically something that I forgot to mention. So to embed schema.org data, uh, there, you can do it in different um, micro, you can do it in different ways. So you can do it with using a JSON LD, but also other micro uh, formats such as RD, um, yeah, RDA. Yeah, RDA. Uh, so we chose JSON LD just because um, it's quite, we have already a mapping for that because in our API, our the, the output of the Europana API is in JSON LD. Um, and um, so, yeah, that's why we went for this solution. And also because I feel JSON LD is, uh, is more used by the community. So, yeah, right. that's well, why we, just, we, okay. we did so, that. So I'm sorry, but I think maybe you, you can later. take this offline. Those are very good questions, but we need to move on to the next speaker. So, uh, thank you very yeah. much once more, Valentin. Yeah.